Today's message is by Lee Taylor. And the reason Lee is not here, he's here via video. But he's taking his son, and they're flying to California, and that's where his son will be going to college. So Lee couldn't make it. So you can follow along with Lee's message. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> I almost said good morning, but it is good morning here, but it will be afternoon. It's good to be with you even via video today. I'm recording this Saturday morning, and I'll be leaving in a little bit to go to the airport to take Jacob to college. I'll miss being with all of you today. But I'd like to give another message, part of what we began last week called the Septic Church. Remember last week we talked about how churches, how a church in Corinth really faced a big struggle in hard times. It just seemed that they started so well. People became saved. They joined the church. But then later, after a few years, things started, they started having problems. Things were declining. They backslid. They fell from away from God. And what we saw last week, that caused big problems. They were caused by sin and problems with strife and arguing with each other in the church. There were a lot of different things going on. Churches don't have to be that way, but churches are full of people, and none of us are perfect. So we need to learn from that church and make sure that we aren't making the same mistakes. So as I have thought about that, and the church there at Corinth, I think, well, how can we change what was happening to them? It's good for us to ponder on that. Because we don't want to make the same mistakes they were making. So I was reading and I wondered, well, you know, why was it these things came into the church that they went so far away from God? They just got involved in sin and doing things that they should not, what was happening to them? So I was reading and I began to realize part of the problem, and I want to share it with you today, because we can easily make the same mistakes. They were just people like we are. So God gave us that information in his word. He told us their story to help us observe and realize we don't want to make those same mistakes. So let's think about that. Think about the fact that Paul, well, anytime you went to any community to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ was crucified, died on the cross for sin. When Paul was done preaching, people would, some people would receive Christ into their hearts. Maybe two, three, four, ten people, who knows, different numbers. People would 
bond together and trust Christ. Let's suppose the number was 10. 10 people trusted Christ after a message. So of that group, then Paul helped to start a church, helped them establish a church. They met, Paul preached to them, they discussed God's word, and a church was officially started in that community. And that's, then those people took the gospel and began to share it with people in their town. Other people joined the group, and that is how the church grew. And that is normal. So in Corinth, the same pattern had happened. Paul preached the gospel. People trusted Christ. They were meeting weekly, sometimes more than weekly, but it had been daily or several times during the week. They came together to read the scriptures and study and learn more about God. And they shared the gospel with others in the city of Corinth. More people came and joined and the church grew. And God blessed that effort. Remember last week we talked about that church? It was a large group. And they grew, and that was the process. But over time, things began to change. How did that come about? You know, those problems happen in churches today in the United States or in other countries where there are churches. The same problems exist as existed in Corinth. Churches are established, there is, ex there is excitement and fire and inspiration, and then progress slows. People lose interest. And the point of that is what I'd like to share with you. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 23, the Bible itself says, and it's just a short verse, but it's powerful. It says, Keep your heart, protect your heart with all diligence of seriousness because from, the Bible uses the word from your heart. That really is talking about your mind. From that, from your mind, you are making decisions to believe. Well, what in the world does that mean? God warns us. We are to protect our minds. We are to protect our eyes and our imaginations and our ideas. And the reason is because the Bible tells us from our <coughs> minds, are where we make decisions. And that process of protection will help us to make good decisions to avoid sin and all kinds of things. So what we think when we think about something, uh, let me just give you an example here. If I make the decision, maybe I'm curious, kind of wondering about, maybe I want to try something brand new I've never done before. Maybe I want to watch some type of a dirty movie that I shouldn't be watching. And I think, well, you know, what would be so bad about that? So I watch, and then I start getting drawn in, and sin is opened in my life. Now I have to hide it because I don't want people to know. And think about our hearts. Our hearts tend not to be satisfied with just a little bit of sin. I try just a little bit, and then I develop more interest, and then I need to get involved even more. And I get very focused on that sin. And then what happens? Well, maybe I start watching one dirty movie, and then it's, that wasn't enough to satisfy me. Now I need more. And more. 
now maybe I'm going to go somewhere, some kind of a club where I can see people in real life and I get involved in worse things and awful things and maybe I get involved in an affair. Well, now how did all of this get started in the first place? Well, quite possibly, I just began to watch. This one time I thought, I'm kind of wondering about this, so I'm just going to check something out. And that is from Satan. Just that one time. Just that one time. And we get drawn right in. And then we are involved, and then we're there in sin. Maybe you remember the story from years ago. Of, from the book of Genesis about a man named Lot. He was with Abraham. They worshipped God. They were close with God. But Lot became very interested and fascinated and brought into the town named Sodom, wondering about them and their activities. He had heard about that place. So he moved closer. And in the process of life, Lot got drawn into sin, the sin of that community. And life became worse and worse. And it started because he was just curious and wondered about what was going on there. And it led to some involvement in sin. And that applies to the church at Corinth that we talked about too. How did that church get so far from God and so involved in sin? Just like that, they got involved. You know, people, they loved God, but in the process of time, they kind of got away from him. Maybe something there was something more exciting out there than God, or church, or preaching. Yeah, you know, it gets kind of boring after a while, perhaps. And they started backsliding or falling away from God. And the church became something different. They started focusing on themselves rather than God. <clears throat> they failed to reach out to the community. When those things happen, the church becomes what is called septic or sick. Any church that is sick happens because people as individuals in the church become sick or septic themselves. They get interested in other things other than God. That's a sad situation. So when that happened in Corinth, that caused people to fight and struggle and just um, completely be disinterested in others, just brush them away. They didn't want to be around those types of people anymore. They were selfish, perhaps. They wanted things for themselves. Did you know that church is not about me? It's not about you either. It's not for us. A church is supposed to be to worship Jesus Christ and have the opportunity to share the gospel with other people. Church can help us, and we are, you know, we're encouraged there to stay faithful and to love and serve God and to learn more about God's Word. It's not just for us to sit and say, okay, I want people to serve me now. That's not church. Today in America, we make such mistakes, but when we think, oh, church is for me. What can my church do for me or the church do for me? That's a mistake. We need to look for opportunities. How can we serve? How can we be involved? How can we help that church? How can we reach people's lives with the gospel? You know, 
that's true for all of us. Think about our minds. The average person goes to church with the minds that I need the church to serve me, I need them to do things for me, and that's how all this starts to happen. We need to guard our hearts and our minds. When we get involved in sin, sin starts to really take over and cover our lives. It just takes over us. It takes us over. We just can't let sin control us in that, our bodies. Because sin will not help us. As we learn about Christ, as we see the need for the deaf community, sin will not help us. We only serve ourselves. We serve the flesh at all. When the Bible says to protect our hearts, it means that we have to make sure that we are involved, not involved in sin. Of course, we're not perfect. Many times Satan tries to pull us right into a fascination or an involvement in sin. The devil is smart. He knows that once we're involved, we can't serve God anymore. We need to put that protection around our hearts. The Bible encourages us to be holy like Jesus. Not just a holier than thou attitude, but making a decision each and every day that I don't want to get involved in certain things, that I'll get away from temptation, and that I will ask God to help me defeat temptation. I won't get pulled in. We need to do that every day because all around us are many different temptations that Satan can put there and say, come on, come on, just get involved. It's fun. You're going to enjoy this. Just try it one time. That's dangerous. When we decide, okay, just one time, we let Satan have a little bit of room in our lives and then we get pulled farther from God and that is wrong. We can't do that. If I do that and if you do that and you do that and all of us do that, all of us fall away from God. And if we all do that, our churches become weak. And we don't have any kind of a, I mean, we don't give a good impression for God at all. When God says that we're to protect our heart, it means that we need to say, no, I'm not going to get involved in these things that I shouldn't do. I'm not going to get pulled away from God. And that helps us become stronger Christians. As we're strong in Christ, we will understand more. Yes, I do need to serve God. I do need to serve other people. I need to be concerned for them. That's so important. The church in Corinth had done that before in its early days. But as time went on, they just stopped. And Paul wrote to remind them, you're not mature in Christ. You've gotten pulled into sin so easily. Walk with God. Read the Bible. Pray. But, you know, you're not, you're not faithful anymore. You need to stop the things that you're doing. You need to serve God again. He was warning them. God gives that same message to us in the Bible. He's warning us.
if we read Paul's letter to Corinth and we ponder and think about it, we wonder, did they come back to serving God with a holy heart? If so, it was because they decided, yep, we're wrong, we're sinning, we're doing things we shouldn't call as right. We need to start serving God again. We need to just put sin away from us. We need to start being involved in people's lives, not going out and telling them that they're wrong and they're terrible people, but we need to get involved in their lives. We need to invite them to repent. We need to make sure our own hearts are right. So Corinth, again, became a strong church. It actually took quite a few years. But that church did listen, and they started to grow again. How can our church prevent um, the condition of being septic? How can we as individuals just decide you know, we're going to serve God. We're going to avoid sin. It's hard to get out of it once you're in. When you get involved and when you really like it, it's hard to get out. You know, we need to say then, Lord, I need your help. This is a struggle. I'm addicted here. I'm pulled right in. Please help me to escape. And God will help you. I encourage all of you to think about that. About guarding your hearts. Keeping your hearts from sin. Don't let sin come in and take over and have its way and affect you. The better way would be to protect your heart. And stay close to God. Stay close to Him. Think of a little boy. Maybe a little boy is out walking with his dad. Maybe they're, they're on a trail out for a hike. And the little boy looks around off the path. He sees rocks. He wants to see, you know, he's looking up, seeing the tall trees. Maybe he strays a little bit off the trail. <coughs> Maybe he hears something and he gets scared out in the woods, so he heads right back to Dad because he's looking for protection from his father, so he stays close. He didn't know what that sound off the trail was. What was going on out there? It scared him and he ran back to Dad, and he knew Dad would protect him. God is our Heavenly Father. We need to stay close to him because he will protect us. In the book of Psalms, there are many, many times that David, the writer, wrote about that God is my protection. And that is the truth. He protects us from sin if we come close to him, if we stay close to him. Don't go straying off the trail. God, let's guard our hearts to stay close to the Lord. And I trust that helps you today. Okay, I look forward to seeing you next week. And again, I'm sorry I can't join you today. Pray for us as we come back. I'll be back on Wednesday, or flying back on Wednesday. And I look forward to being back with you in church next Sunday, okay? We shall see you and have a great week. Love ya.